Rainbow Six Extraction is coming out in a couple of days and we've been lucky enough to play it. So we're going to round up all of our beginners tips and all of that good stuff for you guys so that you're a little bit ahead of where we were when we first started playing. So do make sure to drop a like and subscribe down below. And I'm Paradise Central, so let's jump into it. I want to start off by talking about the operators. There will be a selection of them available and more to unlock as you progress through the game. However, some of them definitely seem to be more useful than others out on the missions. They all have their own niche and purpose, but there were a couple that we recommend you guys try out earlier on to give you a bit of an edge. We'll start off with Doc as a really obvious choice and almost a must pick on your team because health is a vital resource as you progress through the levels as your injuries do carry over after the mission is complete so you really don't want to be taking damage and doc of course has his stim pistol which at level one gives you three shots that heal for 15 however at maximum you get five shots that heal for 30. it does only give you the blue bar the temporary health however that is still a really good buffer to avoid taking damage to your actual operator. So he's one of the few ways that you can actually heal throughout the missions. And unlike other operators such as Finca, her heal actually is a time heal and does end after its effect. Whereas Docs will stay on you and degrade at the normal pace that the bonus health does. After you have unlocked him, Rook is also going to be an absolutely excellent option as his pack of armor plates is going to be very excellent for not just reducing damage, but also preventing you and your teammates from becoming KO'd. After you've gone down, the next time you go down will be a KO and you will have to be rescued by your teammates. However, if you have an armor plate, you will always go into the down state instead of the KO'd state and of course the extra damage resistance that you get from it too. So Rook is absolutely excellent to keep your teammates from getting KO'd. Pulse is also a really interesting option. He of course has his cardiac sensor, which allows you to look at things through walls through the sensor, and it does actually detect and show and highlight for your teammates, VIPs, MIAs, and nests. And nests are going to be a thing you always want to be looking for in the levels. So this allows your teammates to have that easy situational awareness and find those spawn point nests before it starts overwhelming you. It is with the drawback that you do have to be actively holding and looking through the sensor in order to do this so you can't shoot while you're scanning for your teammates. However, at later upgrades, it can actually do this while holstered to a much shorter radius around you. I found that if you had pulse on your team, it was significantly easier to find objectives and find nests as you went throughout the levels. Next up, I want to bundle together two different operators that are both very effective at doing takedowns on elite targets, which you will often have to do for different objectives. Ella, of course, has her sticky proximity mines that stun enemies core in the blast and when you are against elite targets or any enemies in general you can either throw this at them or in the path that they're coming to you from and it will then stagger them for a couple seconds this is absolutely perfect for then running up behind those elites or those mission targets that you have to do a takedown on in order to finish it quickly and easily whereas you also have vigil with his erc8 disruptor where he can essentially be undetected for a short period of time and run behind the target and then do a takedown as well. So both Vigil and Ella are very, very good for doing takedowns when you have those missions active. Now that we've talked about particular operators that we thought were very good from our time playing, let's talk about particular objectives that we recommend that maybe you try with extreme caution or extract before you get to them because we found them to be significantly more difficult than other ones. There are three objectives that we want to highlight as more difficult than other ones, starting off with the decontamination objective. This is where you need to destroy about 15 contaminated green nests that are often in a very dense area. And then once you've destroyed all 15, you then find the central nest in that area and take a sample from it by actually going up to it and using your knife on it. This objective is substantially more difficult than other ones because it has an area of highly concentrated 
nests that also spawn enemies once you sort of start shooting them and taking them down, which means a lot of enemies are going to be spawning. On top of this, the green nests also explode into a sort of poison mist that is very highly damaging if you go near it. Early on in the game, it might not be too bad. However, as you start progressing through the different areas and unlocking the higher difficulties, you then start to fight different types of enemies that can make this significantly more challenging because so many enemies will be spawning once you begin this objective. The next one to be very cautious of is the serial scan objective. This has you capturing different zones while also being attacked by waves of enemies. Essentially you need to find the projector and then go and stand in the capture areas without leaving them. It becomes very difficult because the enemies that will be sent to you will often be trying to melee attack you, to shoot you, sending in bombers that explode and can almost insta kill you if they do manage to make it to you. And as you get in higher difficulties, more and more enemy types start spawning and can make this significantly more difficult. On top of that, we found that the barricading systems of siege that are also in extraction, such as blocking the doors or reinforcing the walls, don't actually do too much when a lot of the explosive and enemy types can simply break through them anyway. So we did find the capture zones to be quite difficult, especially on the harder difficulties. And then the last objective that we wanted to highlight for its difficulty is the gateway. This is where you enter a singularity to go and kill the Protean, which is like a boss fight, essentially. You get teleported to a different zone, and then you have to spend the next five plus minutes fighting this boss that will be constantly trying to kill you, as well as waves of enemies spawning. This is definitely a more challenging one, and we'll have another video on this coming in the future. But essentially, these three objective types are ones that we found to be more challenging than the others, and so you might want to consider extracting before doing these, or if you're feeling particularly brave, let me know how you got on with them down in the comments below. I do also have a few more general tips to give you guys that might just help you. First of all is to not be too worried about using your operator's abilities. It's very easy to try and conserve them, but it's often better to use them when you need them rather than to only end up using them once or never throughout the mission. Some operators like Lion or Finca have abilities that are based on a cooldown and then come back up while others like Doc, who has his stim shots, will only get a few shots and once ran out, you will have to find the boxes throughout the levels. So depending on the operator that you're playing, you might want to consider using your abilities more or less depending on the situation. Another thing to look out for are these green spores that are often clustered in different areas of the map. You can of course shoot them and then you don't have to worry about it, but sometimes you miss them and then they will stick to you. When this happens, you will need to get a teammate to either shoot or preferably melee them off of you so you don't take damage. And we did find that if you are crouched, it was a little inconsistent to remove them with the melee. So we recommend standing up to allow your teammates to melee you to remove those spores. If you don't remove them, they will explode and completely block your vision with green mist, as well as do some damage to you. One final tip that I think is really helpful is that if you do get an MIA operator and you have to go back and rescue them, by picking the particular area that you need to go to rescue them, you can also select the difficulty, and this means that you could pick the lowest difficulty moderate, and that just increases your chances of getting your favorite operator back once they've gone MIA. If you did find this helpful, let us know down in the comments below. I'm very keen to hear what you guys think and how you guys get on once you start playing in a couple of days. Thank you for watching everyone. Have a great day. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to catch more from us, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our latest uploads. And if you want somewhere to hang out, play games, or chat all things from games to anime, food to fitness, consider joining the RX Gaming Discord.